This is Speaking with the Enemy. Yes, the show is called Speaking with the Enemy. It should be more like speaking about the enemy because this guy, Calgary Suns, Danny Austin, is not my enemy. He's my friend, and he's with me now. And uh, uh, Danny, the Calgary Stampeders are coming to town. You're coming to town. Uh, tell us what we need to know about this team right off the top. I mean, I'd argue most people are getting it wrong with this team. Uh, I saw those, I mean, always ridiculous CFL power rankings had them seventh despite actually winning a game and two teams that lost being above them. Um, look, this is a good, good, good Calgary Stampeders team. After that game in Hamilton last year, I mean, you remember it, the Stamps were terrible in that game. Um, since then, they've been as good as anybody in the league. They kind of went back, fixed some things, got hot down the stretch, and then brought the whole team back. So seeing a ton of continuity – Big question still about Bolivar Mitchell, but other than that, um, honestly, this team's going to be going to be tough for anyone to handle. Uh, for someone who's complaining about power rankings, the fact you changed your Twitter bio to at Jamie Nye's number two CFL power ranking reporters, uh, I, I don't know. I got to take that with a, a grain of salt there. I don't man. know how I don't know how much I want to comment, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I did. <laughs> Credit to Jamie and I for stirring the pot. You know, I respect that. I, I got Steve Milton uh, to the left of me over there too, who I think made an appearance in those power rankings. I don't know what I'm going to have to do to get myself into those, but uh, I'll you figure it out. You don't want to be in those, Danny. You do <laughs> not want to be in those. The worst is the threads underneath it. That's that's so you get all the mentions of people yeah. get angry. Uh, you mentioned Bo Levi Mitchell. I mean, he's, he's a Hall of Famer. We know that. His last game in Hamilton – a lot of people looked at is like, was this the end, right? Because he had a terrible first half. The mayor comes in and dominates. Where is Bo Levi Mitchell right now? I mean, like, look, he played three and a half quarters uh, before sort of having a little bit of a, of a foot slash ankle issue that doesn't appear to be a big deal. In week one, he threw for 200 yards. That's not amazing, um, but it's not bad. Uh, one interception, not the end of the world. Um, look, I, I, I honestly think Bo, I've had this argument a million times with people now. I think he's healthy. I think he's, he's ready to go. And I, I, I do think there are going to be some early season struggles and there's such a spotlight on every mistake that he makes that it's a tough spot to be in because people are just determined to make that, you know, to be the first one to say Bo's done. I don't think Bo's done. I think Bo is still a elite, elite quarterback in this league. Um, maybe not that 2016 guy, but also maybe that 2016 guy. He's been hurt the last two years. He's healthy now. That's the relevant information, whatever other media tell you. I mean, to be fair, though, his, his backup has played pretty well in what we've seen from him. So do you feel like maybe he, he has some pressure on him to perform and that maybe the leash isn't as long as it was or it would have been a year ago or two seasons ago? Um, I mean, I, I think that you can either look at it as a leash or you can look at the Stampeders having, you know, a safety net, right? Um, I, I don't think Dave Dickinson, you know, I saw I saw Stamps fans midway through the second quarter. Bo had a bad second quarter. There's The whole Stamps did last year saying, got to pull him, got to pull him. I'm sorry, if you're pulling a superstar quarterback after six bad minutes, you don't know, you're not going to be a coach for long. So I think Dave Dickinson has full faith in him. I think it's a positive that they have Jake Mayer um, available, ready to go. Look, if Bo is not good for an extended stretch, yeah, it would not it, it would not surprise me if Jake Mayer came in. Um, but you know, the people looking to pull the plug, this is still Bo Levi Mitchell. Like he still want he still was the quarterback for the hottest team in the league coming down the stretch last year. This guy's not washed. I I, I don't know why people. <laughs> We just want, we just want, we just want something to talk about, right? CFL. I mean, that's what they do. Like, this is, this is the business room. We got to talk about that. And Jake Mayer, like you said, like, I mean, he's got a pretty decent resume behind him and and we all know what I mean, Levi is, but. If you're asking me a different question, which is, do I think Jake Mayer might be the starting quarterback in 2023 for the Calgary Stampeders? Yeah, I do. I think we're getting to that point where it's, it, it's pretty close to being able to say that might be their better choice if they have to pick one of the two. Where are the strengths on the football field for this Stamps group right now? Defense, defense, defense. Um, I mean, the big question right now is their defensive back group. Um, they do have injuries 
news. Brandon Dozier's out, which is big. So they're very young and they're mixing and matching a little bit. Uh, but man, the linebackers, Cam Judd and Jameer Thurman, just like these guys are going to have so many tackles this year. Like by the end of the year, I have no question that Jameer Thurman is going to be right in that mix. And then the defensive line, it's interesting. They are very much, they remind me of Hamilton a little bit. They're built from the inside out, right? Like they might not have that to Garrett Davis, but the middle of the D-line, they have Mike Rose and Derek Wigan, and Mike Rose is an absolute monster out there. Uh, basically, it was Micah Johnson's apprentice when Micah Johnson was here in Calgary, so a lot of familiarity there. Um, and then, honestly, and I hate saying this because we don't want to be celebrating, but, like, with William Stan back out, I, I do believe Kadeem Carey is the best running back in the CFL. Uh, he might have been in that mix with Stan back in. So uh, they also have an incredible run game and, and some real depth at receiver. Uh, you mentioned, uh, you know, the, the the good things about this team. Are there some question marks? I know you wrote this week in the Calgary Sun about special teams and where they're at there. What have you seen from their special teams in the first game? And where do you expect to see some adjustments here in week two? Yeah, like they don't have like a necessarily like a purpose built returner. So uh, it's a combination sort of, of of Malik Henry and Sean Bain. Malik Henry did a re- really nice job last year. He didn't break out that big one. So so he might not be a guy who around the league people are aware of. Um, but, you know, f- getting good field position is probably more important than, than getting that big one. And, and he does a nice job there. Sean Bain is the other. They sort of alternate at the American wide receiver position um, in the offense and, and and give each other spells on and off on kick return. Uh, yeah, I mean, I do think, look, there, there's no way around it. There, there might be talent in this young DB group. Um, a good coach like Coach O is going to be mixing him matching and trying to you know their eyes haven't seen everything on the cfl field so mm-hmm. they're they're probably a little bit vulnerable uh, i wouldn't be thrown to trey roberson's side i probably would be missing raheem wilson a little bit but there are there's a lot of youth in there and um youth can be good and youth can be bad and, and, and we're sort of going to see how that plays out uh, the calgary stampeders in calgary i mean i, I don't want to play the attendance game or the empty seat game but we've seen some some crowds uh, you know, out there at McMahon Stadium that haven't been what we're used to seeing in Calgary during the heydays. Is this team, how important is it to get wins early and string together a good start to the season to keep momentum on this team and to give reasons a fan, give fans a reason to go out to McMahon Stadium? Yeah, I mean, I think there's been so much success since John Hoffnagel arrived in 2008. I mean, they've won, what, three great cups. They've been in, seems like all of them, basically. Um, and and, and I do think fans got a little bit used to it. Uh, I think there's a little bit of complacency. I would like to see more of a marketing push, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but yeah, I think that with coming out, look, you, you have to bring fans back. And and that's every sports team. I, I think you have to bring new fans in. You have to bring old fans back. COVID's thrown everything off. I, I don't think there's anything better than wins. Um, I'll be perfectly honest with you. When I looked at, at the stamp schedule, this game in Hamilton, I was kind of like, yeah. They can lose it. They got two against Edmonton coming up. I hate to say it, but uh, <laughs> then they have two against Winnipeg. So if you go into those two against Winnipeg at three and one, yeah. you're, you're probably feeling pretty okay. Hmm. Uh, the Calgary Stampeders will win this game on Saturday if what? The Ticats offensive line doesn't do a better job, to be perfectly honest with you. I, I mean, I, <laughs> I could have told I, you that one. <laughs> yeah. I, mean. um, I think that there's this – this D line um, runs sort of six, seven deep in Calgary. And I, I do think that they're going to put Dane Evans under a, a lot of pressure. Um, the What they're doing with the linebackers, it's, you know, there's basically dropping them into coverage at, at times when you're like, there's no way they're dropping. Oh, there they go. They got a pick. Um, I, I, I do think that, you know, this, I don't expect this to be a, a game where the winner needs 45 points. I think the winner needs 27, 28 points. And uh, I, I think the Sam's defense probably, is their biggest asset there. Uh, I know you always love your trips back to Ontario. So uh, you get it early this season, week two. What are you most excited about being back in uh, Southern Ontario here? I mean, the honest answer is seeing my niece and nephew, who I haven't seen in a long, long time. Um, but no, I mean, I, I, Hamilton honestly probably my favorite trip. Um, I'm born and raised in, in Toronto, but I uh, lost friends out, out in the Hamilton area. I went to Guelph, so I obviously know the really really well uh, I just can't wait man it's uh, I, I think downtown Hamilton is sort of there's you I don't think it's a secret for you guys anymore but it's a secret for people who don't live there it's an incredible spot awesome well man can't wait to see you. I know it's travel day for you so uh, safe travels getting here and uh, we'll see you this weekend you yeah, cheers buddy season this has been speaking with the enemy on the Thai Cats audio network